Hi there, this is Hume Douglas, uh, getting ready to dissect uh, Capra beetle larva with the uh, goal of making a temporary slide to look at the mouth parts, especially the epipharynx, the sensory cup inside the epipharynx, and uh, counting the number of sensory papillae. As well, we'll uh, take off the antennae, try to do as well as possible at, at looking at those antennae, and then the uh, clear off some of the abdominal segments, the 7th and 8th abdominal segments, so we can look for the anticostal suture. On those, all the uh, goal of, uh, of identifying the larva, these are from a, a lab colony of Paul Fields. So, we'll go and look at the larvae. This is a live uh, view of specimen under a dissecting microscope. We won't get to see the larvae under the compound scope once the slides are prepared because I don't have a, a good camera that I can mount on there. But we'll take a look at the specimens being cleared. These have been sitting overnight in KOH. Some of them are more or in various degrees of suitability for dissection. This one is okay. This one is still not very clear. You can see if I take away the Kim White from underneath the specimen, still pretty opaque. Here's an exuvium that's uh, very cleared, but we'll try to work with an actual specimen if we can. This specimen here, one is um, didn't work out very well, and the second is moderately cleared, so we may work with that one. So why don't I grab out this moderately cleared specimen and put it in an uh, observation dish of distilled water and begin working on it. Take the specimen out and put it in the observation dish. And it should be visible in the camera. You can see that it's a um, trochoderma larvae, larva. It has no urogonfi on the abdomen. It has lots of hastacetae, and they are situated, if you can see, not on the abdominal sclerites, but behind the sclerites, further back. Zoom back out. We can work on the specimen. It's partially cleared, and I'm going to finish the clearing process by um, taking off the head and hind section of the larvae and clearing it out with distilled water before moving it on to put it on the slide and take the head off. Um, and maybe I'll take the head off now and work on the mouth parts on the slide. So there's the head off and cut off the last three abdominal segments, leaving the final two undisturbed. To look at the setae. I'm going to use some distilled water in a syringe, a small syringe, to clear out the remaining tissue in the middle of the abdomen. The specimen is not reacting very well with the KOH, so there's still lots of fatty tissue in there. So I think I won't use this middle section in the slide because it'll make it too opaque, all the white bits. We'll see how the head and abdomen tip are. I don't know why that didn't clear. I left that overnight in 10% KOH. Um, 
Maybe the, the larvae needed to be boiled sooner. Anyway, I think the, the skin will be okay, and that's the main thing. If I can just move out this um, the white stuff inside, we'll call it fat. And then the head looks, the capsule looks fairly clear. I'll try to inject some water in there. just use the needle, hypodermic needle to take it out. Here is the abdomen tip. I'm going to take the CT off one side of that with a Minutin pen so we can look for those sutures. Which is the, oh, that's the ventral surface. We want to work on the dorsal surface. Here are the bundles of Haste CT. Gonna pull those off, pushing them backwards with the minutin pin, and uh, holding it with the fine forceps. And we can leave them on the left side of the penile. Let's see if we can what we can see. Look under the dissecting scope here. A white background. How visible is the anticostal suture? Not very. It will be better with the uh, phase contrast under the dis under the compound scope. So we'll move to a microscope slide. Get a microscope slide. Put it down here. There's the slide. And I'll put on a drop of glycerin to work in. The slide will only, again, only be good for immediate observation. It's not for long-term storage, but that's useful for quick identifications and um, purposes, depending on what kind of record is needed. I'm going to grab the abdomen tip, put that in the glycerin, and get the head capsule, and bring the glycerin back, put that in there. And maybe I will work on a white background. So the main work is to do with the head. I have a, uh, a micro tool slicer. I'll show you the tip of that. It's got a two millimeter blade, just like that. I'll use that to cut the head just behind the mandibles, to, which will help me get uh, get the mandibles out of the way and work on the uh, flattening the epipharynx for viewing under the compound scope. Separate the two parts. There's the head. just behind the mandibles. Flattening it down and trying to cut away the back half of the head castle, which I won't use much taxonomically. And I'm going to zoom in. The front part of the head, we have left the antennae, both sides, the labrum, the epipharynx is on the underside of the labrum here, and the two mandibles. So I'm going to hold it by one side with the forceps. Push the mandibles through from the back. All the muscle tissue holding them in place is gone. So it's easy to remove one mandible, two mandibles, tore the head a bit. That's okay. And I could just take away this top part of the head cut here that has the antennae and the mandibles. I'm not using the lower mouth parts much today. 
they can be torn away too. Okay, how's this tissue looking? Still a bit messy. Get a number one insect pin so I can hold this all down, get rid of the parts that we, I don't want. bent pin. Okay, so there's the labrum. The upper surface is the labrum. The lower surface, for surface is the epipharynx. Go back to my forceps. I'll hold that down with the forceps. And I'm going to cut along this line. between the clypeus and the labrum. Looking at it from underneath, so you can see the, uh, the rods of the epipharynx, the epipharynx is floating up. I'm going to just slice here, if I can. Separate the labrum from the head. There's the labrum and epipharynx by itself. How about the mandible with the antennae? Don't want to lose that epipharynx up here. I'll keep the antennae attached to the head. If I can clean that up a little bit, I will. Okay, so there's the middle part of the fronds and clypeus, the two antennae. Get the mandibles out of the way. So we have three parts that we'll look at for the under the compound scope. The abdomen here, the antennae, one, two here on either side of the clypeus, and then the epipharynx. Try to position that so that the ventral surface is up. You can see the two zoom back in. You can see this is the ventral surface because here's one of the rods on either side of the sensory cup. There should be two. I'm not sure if one got torn in the dissection or not, but I'll have a look at that under the compound scope and see what you can see. And this is it. You can see the antennae, segment one, the base, and segment two two are about the same length, and more detail than that will be visible under the compound scope. So now I'm going to get the cover slip, put that on, and try to keep everything flat, especially that epipharynx. So I'm going to hold the cover slip in the fine forceps, get the wipe with a Kim wipe. Slowly lower it onto the tissues. They don't have too much control over what they do right now. But glycerin spreading, it looks like everything is flat. Here we have the microscope slide. See the edges of the cover slip. And the three parts we're looking for. The, uh, the apex of the abdomen flattened between there in dorsal view. The fronds and clypeus with the antennae flattened in various ways. And the epipharynx, the labrum and epipharynx, there in the middle. I will then take a magic marker, fine uh, illustrating pen, and I'll make a mark 
on the slide near the epipharynx so that I don't lose it so it's easy to find under the compound scope. So let's see, I'll just do that there. Oh, it's right under the epipharynx. So I will slide the cover slip a little bit to move it just off there. Anyway, this will help me find it. And uh, now the slide is ready for examination under the compound microscope. I hope that was helpful and that you've had a good workshop.